Before we deploy our application, it'd be handy if we had some interaction and made our list save state so the user can carry on where they left off later. In this short video, we'll look at how easy it is to add third-party libraries to your project. We'll also be able to reap the benefits of the service pattern that we've implemented in our list application by demonstrating how we can add items to our list array and see the list update in real time. Let's start by adding a new component to let the user add new items. This component will consist of a text box for the title, a date box for the due date, and a submit button. Just as before, in your terminal, type ng g component add item. In our component class, let's add a method that gets called when the user adds a new item and click submit. We're going to be using template reference variables in our view to pass the title and due date values to our submit function. We use template reference variables to reference DOM elements, Angular components, directives, and web components. To declare reference variables, we use the hash symbol. For example, to declare a title variable on our title input element, we do input hash title. Now let's go ahead and add our form. Now we can add the new component underneath our list component in the app component template. We'll separate these components with a line break to keep things spread out. Let's make a couple of tweaks to our list component and make the experience slightly better for the user. We're going to remove the test data that we've been using and then we'll add an alert that displays if there's no items in the list. First, let's remove the for loop from our list component constructor. And now we'll add an alert to tell the user their list is empty. We'll use the ngif directive to make sure the alert only shows if our list array has no items. Now we're able to add items to our list, but wouldn't it be great if the items persisted when we refresh the screen? 
Let's add some functionality to save the list to the browser's local storage each time the array changes. We're going to be using the Angular 2 local storage package. All we need to do is install it, add it to our imports and add some basic configuration and we're ready to save and load our data as we need. In the terminal, use npm to install the local storage package by typing npm i dash dash save angular2 local storage. In the app module, let's import the local storage module then add it to Angular's import array. We're going to pass in two options, a prefix and a storage type. Okay, in our list service, we're gonna use the local storage service to load the list into our array and create a save method that we can call every time a new item is added, removed, or changed. Let's add some items to our list, then refresh the screen to make sure they persist. Great! In a short amount of time, we've managed to add some interactivity and more importantly made our application remember state to make it much more useful. This demonstrates the power of Angular and Angular CLI. We've gone from blank canvas to a functioning list application with hardly any effort. The biggest benefit of these tools is that they do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, leaving us to get on with the important parts without having to mess around under the hood. In the last part of this series, we're going to look at the different deployment strategies Angular provides to us, exploring the advantages and disadvantages of each and walking through the steps necessary to get our app deployed in a production environment. If you like this video or have some suggestions on how it could be improved, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Your feedback is really important in making these videos better. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.